try to make the donuts. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Daily Devotions with Pastor Sutton on this Thursday, February 2nd, Groundhog Day. Well, that's, but that's not a church holiday, Pastor. Why are you talking about that? Well, because I hate winter, frankly. But it's also the purification of Mary and the presentation of Jesus on this on this uh, uh, February 2nd, February 2nd is that is the day for that. Um, so let's talk about that for a little, for a, just a minute here before we get into the swing of things. Uh, 32 days, 32 days, Levitical law, 32 days after Jesus' circumcision and 70 weeks after the announcement of John's birth to Zechariah by the angel Gabriel. The Lord comes to his temple to fulfill the Torah. And this happens in Luke chapter 2. It's recorded in Luke chapter 2. The days are indeed fulfilled with the presentation of Jesus' parents. Uh, or fulfilled with the presentation. Jesus' parents, new sentence, keep the Torah and fulfill it by bringing Jesus to his true home. Also, Jesus' parents offer the alternative sacrifice of two turtle doves or Two pigeons, pigeons, doves, it's all the same thing. Um, Leviticus 12 allows this instead of a lamb, since not everyone could afford a lamb, showing the poverty and humility of Joseph and Mary. Yet no lamb was necessary because already here at 40 days old, Jesus is the lamb brought to his temple for sacrifice. <laughs> Simeon's nunc dimittis, <clears throat> is a beautiful example of the immediate response to this inauguration of God's consolation and redemption in the Christ child. Speaking to Mary, Simeon also prophesies about the destiny of the child. He talks about uh, Christ being uh, for the fall and rising of many, and a sword will pierce through your own heart. So today, the presentation of our Lord. Um, the reason this is done is um, following the Exodus, right? If you if you recall, the tenth plague um, was when um, God commanded the Israelites, uh, the children of Jacob, to uh, to um, cook a lamb whole in, in its entirety with its innards intact, um, and use the blood from it for the doorposts and the lintel to mark their homes as uh, uh, God's people and uh, to protect them. Um, and then to eat that lamb whole uh, in the home uh, with their uh, loins girded and their staff in hand ready for travel. Because after this, God would, would uh, they would be sent out of Egypt. Um, and uh, the angel of death came through um, the land of Egypt, and the firstborn child of uh, every family and every um, animal, uh, not marked by the blood of the lamb, uh, was uh, died. Um, the angel of death destroyed them. Um, and from that day forward, the firstborn children of Israel belong to the Lord. So if you, if the, the, the child who opens the womb of the woman, uh, if you wish to keep that child in your home, you need to go to uh, the temple and redeem them, purchase them back from the Lord. Um, and so the Redeemer is redeemed on this day. Um, if, you, if you didn't redeem it, well, uh, um, Samuel is an example of this. Um, Hannah and her husband Elkanah, um, and then there's Elkanah had another wife. Um, and Hannah had been barren, and Hannah was the wife that Elkanah loved more, uh, but she was barren, and she prayed to God for a child. And uh, when they returned home from one of the visits to the temple, probably a Passover or some such, um, one of the celebrations, um, Elkanah knew his wife, and she bore and conceived, or conceived and bore Samuel. And instead of redeeming him, um, they took him to the temple and presented him, and uh, he became a servant in the temple of the Lord. 
so that's kind of the other side of things. But Jesus is redeemed by Joseph and Mary uh, at the price of two turtle doves. Also, 32 days, uh, because Jesus is a male child. Um, a woman is unclean during her time of her cycle uh, and for so many days after. Um, and after a birth, by the same token, she's considered unclean until she uh, makes the offering uh, 32 days later for a uh, for her for her uncleanliness. Um, yeah, Bonnie says it makes her stay, lets her stay home and relax. Um, and interestingly enough, 32 days for a male, but it's like 60 days for a female child. So, because it's it's both the mother and the child's uncleanliness. Um, so anyway, today, besides Groundhog Day, purification of Mary and the presentation of our Lord at the temple. Uh, let your servant go. Let, let your servant now depart in peace, for my eyes have seen uh, your glory. Let's see who is here <clears throat> with us this morning. Uh, sorry about yesterday. I was like, I, you know, I, I, I've known for a while that I had chapel at St. John and I had I had prepared for it a few days earlier, Monday, I think, but um, I kind of forgot. And then like two o'clock in the morning, I remembered um, and reset my alarm. And when I got to uh, St. John yesterday to do chapel, it was kind of funny because the, the two young men who were um, supposed to acolyte came down and they asked Pastor Zato, should we turn on the cameras? And uh, he said, oh, no, 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 this, is, this isn't for the Facebook and stuff. And I said, uh, you have cameras? I said, why don't we, why don't we turn them on? And uh, so I was able to share that with those of you who wanted to watch. Um, so thank you for joining us for St. John's Chapel yesterday. It's fun to go preach at a school for a while. I mean, it's just, it's different. Okay. Anyway, good morning. Uh, Jerry, Jerry, good morning. <clears throat> Cold breeze. All right. Jill and John, good morning to you guys. Ann and Deb, good morning. Verna, good morning. Mushtaq, good evening. Kathy, good morning. Leela, good morning, dear. Connie and Robin, here you are. Uh, above zero today in Harsha. Yeah, but it won't be tomorrow. They're already talking 23 below tonight or worse uh, with wind chills that are even below that. And there's Bonnie chiming in. I'm going to refresh one more time here just in case somebody popped in and let's click there and uh yeah all right all right that's that looks like that's all that chimed in hello to those of you hiding in the background or watching later here or on youtube and i forgot to hit the record button again darn it i'll have to go pull the video down all right well let's move on if you have <clears throat> excuse me, allergy stuff or congestion with a weather change or something, I don't know. Um, if you have uh, the Lutheran Service Book, page 295, daily prayer for individuals and families, I've got my treasury right here, and we will begin as we do here each each day with a little, little liturgy and the word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm this morning, Psalm 75, all 10 verses, it looks like. Psalm 75. We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your name is near. We recount your wondrous deeds. At the time, or at the set time that I appoint, I will judge with equity. When the earth totters and all its inhabitants, it is I who keep steady its pillars. I say to the boastful, do not boast to the and to the wicked, do not lift up your horn. Do not lift up your horn on high or speak with haughty neck. For not from the east or from the west and not from the wilderness comes lifting up. But it is God who executes judgment, putting down one and lifting up another. 
For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup with foaming wine well mixed, and he pours out from it, and all the wicked of the earth shall drain it down to the dregs. But I will declare it forever. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked I will cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be lifted up. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Uh, let me look here. Okay, so we have that opening phrase, we give thanks to you, O God, we give thanks, for your name is near, we recount your wondrous deeds. And that is that is uh, the psalmist or the people crying out to the Lord in praise and thanksgiving. And then there's a set of quotes, because there's a, a section here, verses 2 through 5, that is God speaking back to his people. And so he that's when he says, at, at the set time, at, at the time of his choosing, or at the proper time, um, he will appoint, he will judge with equity. And you know, that phrase, equity, has kind of changed in our society since this translation was done. So, um, uh, and it, 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 it is, it is, um, well, I'm not going to go into that right now. That's that's more complicated. What's that? Well, God knows what he means. Besides, this was written in Hebrew, not English. So he says that when the earth shakes and totters uh, and, all its in, and all its inhabitants with it, right? When the earth shakes, everybody on it shakes. You know, you feel earthquakes in California. You feel them all the way out to New York and out into the ocean. Um, it is God who steadies the pillars, right? The, the world remains by the will of God, right? It's not, um, uh, not, not something that we do, um, but something that he does. Um, so he says to the boastful, don't boast, and to the wicked, don't lift up your horn, right? The, uh, the horn is a declaration of victory. Um, so don't boast. Do not lift your horn on high or speak with a haughty neck, right? Uh, in the Hebrew language, the, um, the, vo the, voice, of, the voice of people, um, what do I want to say, speaking with pride or boasting doesn't come from their mouth. It comes from their neck because their heads are upheld high, right? And you can't see my neck hardly because I have a beard. Um, I said to somebody the other day, should I even be bother wearing my my collar anymore because you can't see it with the beard. If I had a tab, it would be hopeless. But since I wear the round collar, um, at least you can see it from the side, right? Um, silliness. Uh, it, it, and that's that's where the well, that's where it ends. Those those commands: do not lift up your horn on high, do not speak from a haughty, haughty neck. And then the and then the psalmist comes back in. Um, for not the east, from the east or the west or the wilderness comes lifting up, right? The things that, the things that save us, salvation, lifting up, do not come from around us. They come from the Lord. It is God who executes judgment, putting down one and lifting up another. Um, so our salvation comes from God alone. And this cup, in the hand of the Lord, right? The, the psalmist tells us in the hand of the Lord, there is a cup with foaming wine, well mixed, and the, the, the foaming cup is the cup of wrath, the cup of God's wrath. It, the, the foaming is a poison, right? Um, you know, think about it, if, uh, other than maybe a beer. But if somebody hands you a cup of something and it's foaming on the top, does that kind of set you off a little bit? Do you wonder if it's something you should, uh, should drink or be involved with? Right? A foaming cup because of the poison that's in it. The wrath of God is that poison. Um, in the hand of the Lord is a cup with foaming wine, well mixed. He pours out from it, and all the wicked of the earth shall drain it down to the dregs. Right? And this is in contrast to the cup that Christ gives us, which is the cup of blessing. Right? Uh, Paul calls it the cup of blessing. Is not the cup of blessing a participation in the blood of Christ? Uh, is not the bread that we eat a participation in the body of Christ? Right? Um, so the wicked will drain it down to the dregs, the, their death. Their destruction comes from the Lord, um, not from us, right? And Paul says our battle is not with the with the uh, with the creatures of the world, but with the spiritual things, right? We're in a spiritual battle against the old wicked foe, and so he the the the, the psalmist says, "I will declare it forever. I will sing the praises, to, sing praises to the God of Jacob, 
Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Um, All the horns of the wicked I will cut off, and the horns of the righteous shall be lifted up. And the psalmist here is King David, so he will declare battle against the enemies of God. And he will destroy them um, in that righteous wrath. So that's our psalm today. That was was quite a bit out of a psalm, Pastor. Well, yeah, I know, but sometimes you can preach a psalm. I haven't done any preaching of psalms recently. Maybe I should do that some Sunday. Well, let's go on here. Our reading, you guys missed some stuff again, and that's my fault, and I apologize. But you, if you watch the chapel, you heard about salt. And then this Sunday, if you're on the three-year lectionary, you can hear uh, Matthew 5, 13 through 20 again, or 21, 20 or 21, um, salt, light, um, and so on. But today we got Zechariah. We're, we're back, still in Zechariah. Verse, uh, chapter 12, verses 1 to chapter 13, verse 9. So it's a another lengthy reading. In fact, it's a, a full page and almost another half page, um, two columns, almost another half column in um, the treasury. And uh, <clears throat> just as a <clears throat> an understanding here as we're doing this, remember in the Old Testament, some stuff is poetry and imagery, some of it's prose and uh, spoken spoken word, descriptive word. And um, everything in chapter 12 that we're going to be reading is prose. It's, it's regular paragraph, intended paragraph, sentence form. Um, when we get to verse 7 of chapter uh, 13, it turns back to imagery, and I'll let you know that as we get to it. So here we go. Uh, Zechariah chapter 12, starting at verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord concerning Israel. Thus declares the Lord, who stretched out the heavens and founded the earth and formed the spirit of man within him. Behold, I am about to make Jerusalem a cup of staggering to all the surrounding peoples. The siege of Jerusalem will also be against Judah. On that day, I will make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all the people. All who lift it will surely hurt themselves, and all the nations of the earth will gather against it. On that day, declares the Lord, I will strike every horse with panic and its rider with madness. But for the sake of the house of Judah, I will keep my eyes open when I strike every horse of the peoples with blindness. Then the clans of Judah shall say to themselves, the inhabitants of Jerusalem have strength through the Lord of hosts, their God. On that day, I will make the clans of Judah like a blazing pot in the midst of wood like flaming torch torch among sheaves. And they shall devour to the right and to the left all the surrounding peoples. Well, Jerusalem shall again be inhabited in its place in Jerusalem. And the Lord will give salvation to the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem may not surpass that of Judah. On that day, the Lord will protect the inhabitants of Jerusalem so that the feeblest among them on that day shall be like David, and the house of David shall be like God, like the angel of the Lord going before them. Then on that day I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem, and I will pour out the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and pleas for my and pleas for mercy, so that when they look on me, on him whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child, and weep bitterly over him as one who weeps over the firstborn. On that day, the mourning in in Jerusalem will be great as the mourning for Hadad Raman in the plain of Megiddo. The land shall mourn, each family by itself, the family of the house of David by itself and their wives by themselves, the family of the house of Nathan by itself, and their wives by themselves, the family of the house of Levi by itself, and their wives by themselves, the family of the Shemites by itself, and their wives by themselves, and all the families that are left, each by itself, and their wives by themselves. On that day there shall be a fountain opened for the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and uncleanliness. And on that day, declares the Lord of hosts, I will cut off the names of the idols from the land so that they will be remembered no more. 
And also, I will remove from the land the prophets and the spirit of uncleanness. And if anyone again prophesies, his father and mother who bore him will say to him, You shall not live, for you speak lies in the name of the Lord. And his father and mother who bore him shall pierce him through when he prophesies. On that day, every prophet will be ashamed of his vision when he prophesies. He will not put on a hairy cloak in order to deceive, but he will say, I am no prophet. I am a worker of the soil, for a man sold me in my youth. And if one asks him, what are these wounds on your back? He will say, the wounds I received in the house of my friends. And now the poetry part. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd. Against the man who stands next to me, declares the Lord of hosts. Strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. I will turn my hand against the little ones. In the whole of the land, declares the Lord, two-thirds shall be cut off and perish, and one-third shall be alive. And I will put this third into the fire, and refine them as one refines silver, and test them as gold is tested. They will call upon my name, and I will answer them. I will say... They are my people, and they will say, The Lord is my God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So what are we talking about here? What are we talking about here? What are we talking about on that day? It's, it's Good Friday. It's the crucifixion. It's, it's, it's the death and resurrection of Jesus. The salvation will come to the tents of Judah first. The glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem may not surpass that of Judah. Jesus is sent first to the, to the, to the Jews, to those who, who were chosen by him to believe in him. The glory of Israel, a light to the Gentiles. Um... On that day, the Lord will protect the inhabitants of Jerusalem so that the feeblest among them on that day shall be like David and the house of David shall be like God, like the angel of the Lord going before them. Well, Christ is the house of David, right? He is the, he is the descendant of David and he is the house of David and he will be like God. Well, in fact, he is God. Like the angel of the Lord going before them. Well, he is um, the angel of the Lord, which is the pre-incarnate Christ, the theophany that happens throughout the Old Testament. Um, the people of, of Zechariah's time really don't have a context to understand that in that that God would that, that that God would take on flesh, that the Son of God would become incarnate and walk amongst us. But on that day, the Lord, angel of the Lord, will be going before them. Christ will go before them, and on that day, I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Right. Those who believe in him are saved. Those who deny him are already condemned. And I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and pleas for mercy, so that when they look on me, on him whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child, an only begotten son, and weep bitterly over him as one weeps over the firstborn. Yeah, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. At the beginning of the text is written the burden of the Lord concerning Israel. And a prophecy, um, the, the, the Hebrew word for prophecy um, is, is a burden. Um, it is something that the prophet carries. And uh, think about it. Most of the prophets wind up killed, dead, condemned, um, and it, because of what they say, well, what do they speak? They speak God's word. And it, it's a burden to them, a burden to their lives. But they have to speak it. They don't have a choice. They cannot be silent. Uh, I think it's the prophet Jeremiah tries to be silent and he fails utterly. So we have here the crucifixion um, and the mourning each household by itself and their wives by themselves. Um, that's kind of interesting to me because if you think about, if you think about synagogue and temple practice, 
um, the men and the women sit apart. There's a, a men's, the, the men go into the, into the sanctuary, the women go to the women's court. Um, and even in our, in our churches, in, in, I'll say, a century now past, um, the women would sit on one side or in the back of the church and the men would sit to the front. Men did not sit with their families and their wives. The men sat to the front and when the children, when the, when the young men were confirmed, they would then sit with their fathers uh, towards the front of the church. So there's a division uh, in, in the worship here of, of Christ. And so uh, chapter 13 begins, on that day there shall be a fountain opened for the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin. That's baptism. That's the baptism that Christ brings. That's the baptism of Jesus. It is in water combined with the word and the command of Christ that washes away our sin. On that day, the prophet will be ashamed. This business of prophets being ashamed, these are the false prophets. They won't put on a hairy cloak, a cloak made from camel hair, like, like uh, Elijah wore and like John the Baptist wore um, in order to deceive, right? Put on the garments of the prophet, and then perhaps people will believe you. Um, but they won't. They will say, I, I'm not a prophet. I'm, I'm just a worker of the soil, and I was sold into, into bondage. The wounds I received in the house of my friends. And then the poetry calls for the, for the coming of the Christ and the awakening. And here's, here's the phrase that I want to point out here. Strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. And that's what happens. Christ is put upon the cross on Good Friday. And the, and the disciples and the apostles are scattered, right? The only, the only one we know that is standing at the base of the cross is John, St. John, not John the Baptist. He's already been beheaded, but St. John, the evangelist, uh, to whom Jesus gives his mother to, to protect her. Here, in, in the Old Testament, in the book of Zechariah, is the prophecy, the promise of the coming of the Christ. The Pharisees and the the Sanhedrin, the scribes, the Jews of Israel had no excuse. Here it is written. And if they managed to ignore everything that Jesus did in the three years from his baptism up until the Garden of Gethsemane, this clearly speaks of Good Friday. They will look upon him whom they have pierced. Jesus sent his only begotten son to suffer and die for you. That's what this tells us, that he will, this burden given to Zechariah becomes the blessing for those in the house of David and in Jerusalem. And Jerusalem here is the church. It is the, the, it is the Israelites in Zechariah's time and it is the new Israel in our time. And we are brought into that house, into the house of Israel by baptism, because we're baptized into Christ, brought into his body, the church. And if we are in Christ and Christ is an Israelite, then we too are Israel. People who struggle with God, that's what Israel means, right? Jacob got the name Israel, he who wrestles with God. We wrestle with God, we wrestle with our faith, but God sustains us through his word and his sacrament and turns us always away from the cup of wrath and towards the cup of blessing that is the blood of our, our Savior, even his Son, his only begotten Son, Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, as your only begotten Son was this day presented in the temple in the substance of our flesh, grant that we may be presented to you with pure and clean hearts through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue with the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Thursday morning, as we consider uh, our trespasses and the forgiveness that we receive as we forgive others. O oh God, who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over transgression? If my sins were few or insignificant, then your merciful pardon would not be so remarkable. But I know they are many and great. Your law shows me how many my sins are and the price of the remission, which is the blood of your only begotten Son. It shows me how serious they are. Who else but you, O God, who, who, who by love and compassion would sacrifice so much for poor miserable sinners? Yes, the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus, shows the severity of my sin, but also the great depth of your love and grace. As surely as he has risen from the dead, I can be certain that the debt I owed is paid in full, as proof that I will ever stand before you on the last day, justified. You have provided the means of grace. By your word and sacrament, comfort my terrified conscience. When I begin to fear the eternal condemnation my sin deserves. As this new day begins, renew me with your steadfast love. Wipe away my sin according to the promise, which you have made to me in my baptism into Christ Jesus. Graciously give me the newness of life this day, that I may walk before you free of guilt and strive to serve you wholly. For Jesus' sake and in his name I pray. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask your continual blessing upon those who suffer in this world, especially those who call upon your most holy name, those who are suffering from injury, illness, or the effects of age and, Ill, age and, and uh, well, malaise. We ask, Lord, that you would be with them, always granting them comfort, assurance, and strength through the blood of your Son. We pray especially this day for Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, Renee, John, and all who call upon your most holy name. Give them strength, O Lord, that comes only from you, and the peace which surpasses all understanding. As we ask in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our devotion to a close for this Thursday, February 2nd, Groundhog Day. Hopefully tomorrow will be a new day. And if and when it is, or when it is, I should say, we'll be back here with our daily devotions. Same time, same channel. That's almost a Groundhog Day thing in itself. God's peace be with you, and we will see you Friday morning.